Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for staying. Um, Charlie Nothing, and this is my ding later. And don't act like you never saw one before, even though you never saw one before. Suddenly overcome with love for me. 
And I could understand that because I'm often overcome with love for me and myself. <laughs> she looks at me with these great big smoldering eyes and says, I want to give you a blowjob right now. Wow, I could understand that too. I often want to blow me myself. <laughs> and, and on the way to work, can it get any better than that? But then she says, but. Oh, okay, but, but what? I asked her. I really wanted to know. I can't do it with these seats, she said. Sure you can, I said. Come on, do it. I wasn't even thinking about it before, but now I was all into it. No, she said, I can't do it. Sure you can. Just scrunch down and kneel between them. I was pleading already. I can't, she said. Please try. Now I'm begging. No, she said, the seats are wrong. The seats are wrong, ladies and gentlemen. The seats are wrong. The seats cost me a blowjob. Bucket seats cost me a blowjob. I had never considered the implications of car seating devices before, but I certainly started considering them then. Not too many years ago, all regular cars had nice, wide, flat seats. Remember that? You could drive. Yeah. yeah you could. Yeah. You could drive with your arm around your girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever the case may be. You could lie down. You could slide around. You could fuck. You could enjoy cunnilingus or fellatio. You could enjoy cunnilingus or fellatio and fellatio simultaneously. You could sleep, whatever. You could live in your car. In those good old days, only sports cars had bucket seats, and they had a legitimate purpose to hold you in place when you were going around corners 150 miles an hour. But then they started slipping them in a little at a time, like they like to do. Some regular cars started coming out with bucket seats in front, and we thought that was pretty cool. They still had nice, wide, back, flat, back seats. But they didn't stop there. Oh, no. Now every car has bucket seats, not only in the front, but in the back, too. SUVs have three rows of bucket seats, even four. Everything is bucket seats anymore. Fucking bucket seats this, fucking bucket seats that. You can't even find a car with regular seats. Well, what it is is repression, pure and simple. One more nail in the coffin of freedom. Those seating devices are specifically contoured and spaced so you can't have sex, so you can't lie down, so you can't do anything except drive. More of that narrowing down, specializing the lying fucks who rule like so much, so you can't live. That's not true, someone might say. It's a safety thing, a design thing. And that's exactly what they want you to think. Cars used to be our icons of freedom. They used to mean something great, especially American cars. Right here in the land of the free. I used to resonate to that. That's why I proudly made my guitars out of American cars, like this year one. But, but, yeah, but now they've turned it into its opposite, and now we're all slaves to the car. All of us, even if we don't drive. Cars, truck, buses, all the same. We all pay for it. You're paying for it with every bite of food you eat, every piece of consumer goods you consume. You're paying for it every single day you get up in the morning. Nobody needs to tell you what a fucked up situation we have. We all know that firsthand. The thing is, we got to get rid of culture. Culture is the vulture. I don't mean culture like in art and music and literature. I mean culture like tradition and ritual. Oh, maybe art, music, and literature too, when they become traditional and ritual, like great stuff tends to become when it's gotten into the mainstream and gets ground into shit by the wheels of business. For example, the other day I was in a chain store buying condoms, Viagra, and denture cleanser. And they start playing Satisfaction on the Muzak. Satisfaction on Muzak. That's it right there, the end. I can't take anymore. I completely freaked out. All I could do was wait for it to end and I was getting a headache. And then, and then it stopped, and before I had a chance even to breathe a sigh of relief, they start playing Street Fighting Man in Muzak. Well, one thing I can positively guarantee, dingolation will never be on Muzak. Yes, you, thank you, you have my word on that. The very thing that binds us into groups, ethnic, religious, artistic, musicistic, literaturistic, chauvinistic, that's what's killing us. The act of binding into groups, maintaining group identities, that's what separates and alienates. The lying fucks who rule brainwash us that it's a good thing. Preserve your cultural identity. Preserve your cultural identity. Be proud of your culture. 
black pride, brown pride, red pride, yellow pride, pink pride, white pride, blue pride, green pride, every kind of fucking pride you can have ever imagine. Folks, to be proud of your culture is just totally, 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 absolutely stupid. As if you had something to do with it. You had nothing at all to do with it. You can only be proud of something you have accomplished or something you've been part of accomplishing. You cannot be proud of something you have absolutely no control over. You can do certain things, you can, you can hate it, you can appreciate it, but you can't be proud of it. Now, if you could escape your culture, that might be something to be proud of. But be careful, because you know, pride cometh before a fall. The first rule they teach you in songwriting school is it's not cool to preach. Therefore, I wrote a preaching song. I'm going to tell you what you might not want to hear. But believe me, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. But it is for your own good. Okay, enough bullshit. Let's dingley. <laughs> Well, speaking of rice, it ain't all about Anne no more. You ever try to read her stuff? How can people get off on that? I, I don't know. I don't get it. But anyway, it's all about Condoleezza. She's the definitive rice right now, isn't she? Now that, that is one classy lady. She's got George standing on his desk. Do you get it, standing on his desk? No? Class as opposed to sleaze, she won't get down on her knees, so George has to stand on his desk? Never mind. Never mind. But speaking of George, the other George, the real George George, George Carlin, he said Ten Commandments is way too many to remember. He eliminated redundancy in the list and he pared it down to three. I pared it down to one. Don't steal. But remember, at all times, every minute of every day, we are all part of God, if there is a God, and if God is what God is supposed to be. Anything we do or don't do to ourselves or each other, we are doing or not doing to God. When we steal from ourselves and each other, we are stealing from God. Of course, you can't steal from God because God is really God, because if God is really God, then everything everywhere is God and everything everywhere belongs to God. So stealing from God is taking from God and giving to God the same shit at the same time. Ergo, nothing moves, nothing happens, there is no transaction. And that is the true meaning of God's forgiveness. Whatever you did or didn't do, God forgives you because God can. And God can because... Uh, <laughs> God can because you didn't do anything. You're innocent by God. But that part of God that you represent, if God exists and if you exist, is corrupted by your misdeeds. So it's not good for you to be bad. And it's not so much that you're hurting society, which might be a good thing in itself, but when you are bad, you hurt yourself. And that is bad because it's all about you. All about you. And the name of this song is Steal a Meal, and that is hyphenated. Or The Ten Commandments According to Charlie Nothing. Or Just In Case There Is a God. Thank you. 
deal Stealing, feeling, squealing Dealing on the ceiling, no shit. Don't steal. If you steal, it's gonna steal. Don't steal. If you steal, it won't be real. Don't steal. Really feel it real. Don't steal. Don't steal. A healthy appetite is all right, but buy your meal. Don't steal it. But steal a meal tastes better, you say. And you think it lasts forever? No way. You feel something and you think it's real. You feel a thrill, like taking a pill. But you ain't always gonna will. It'll pass by so fast, like gas blowing out your ass. It ain't gonna be what you're thinking. You end up only with the stinking. And that goes away faster than an eyeball blinking. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't steal. If you steal it, don't be real. If you steal it, you won't feel it. Oh, you'll feel something all right. And you think it's real. But what you're feeling ain't really real. What you're feeling ain't really right. What you feel is lying shit and you ain't never gonna get over it. Don't steal. Pay the price for every meal. But everybody steals sometimes, you say. Stealing ain't always a crime, you say. And whereas that may be true, in a way, it's a matter of kind, a matter of degree. What you stealing, who you stealing from, just as long as you ain't stealing from me. But don't get me wrong, inside my song, don't be poking your nose where it don't belong. Cause it ain't coming back out smelling like no rose. I don't want you not to steal from me because I care about my stupid stuff. Of stupid stuff I got enough for one or two lifetimes, maybe three. I want you not to steal from me, not because I care about me, but because I care about you. I really do. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Who you are, what you do. Who you love, who you screw. What you think. Feel when you eat at every meal. I want you happy, I want you real, I want you satisfied with your deal. You can't really be happy unless you're healthy. And when you steal, you cannot heal. Stealing ain't no good for you. Corrupts your soul and makes you unwell. Don't steal. Don't steal. Had a friend who stole his life, killed him deader than night. And a stone left him all alone. In a grave, a pile of bone. On a headstone and grave, here lies a slave. Don't steal. If you steal it, don't squeal, don't steal. If you steal it, won't be real, don't steal. You might like feeling like a thief in the night, but what you feeling ain't gonna be right. What you feel, you think it's real, but it won't really be really real. Don't steal. When you steal, you cannot heal. Don't steal. This is true, it don't matter who, where, when, or why, we're all gonna die, and that is why you better not lie, you better not cheat, you better not steal, you better pay for every meal right away, because if you don't pay right away, you end up paying every day, don't steal.
probably going to fuck you up anyway, even if you are a true believer. I don't know what to say about that. Maybe it's her mysterious way of forgiving you. Don't worship other gods or sculpture. Man, worshiping sculpture, that's the worst. You do that and God's going to forgive you and you don't want that. You really don't want that. Don't covet thy neighbor's house, wife or man servant. If you covet, you'll be stealing from your own mind. And that's bad shit and you will go blind. false witness against thy neighbor. If you bear false witness, you steal in the truth, and steal in the truth that is most untruth. Don't steal. Don't swear falsely by the name of the Lord. Now, I don't know why she even cares about that, but whatever. She's God. Honor thy father and thy mother. Even if they're stupid shits fucking you in the ass and pinching your tits, I don't think so. Don't kill. Not even a little bit. There's no such thing as a little killing. When you kill a little, you're always willing to kill a little more. When you kill, you always will. Then keep the Sabbath. If you don't rest, you don't be blessed. You don't be stressed. And don't commit no adultery, not unless she's nice and sultry. Don't steal. Stealing ain't being real. Don't steal.
bless you. Just in case there is a God.